In this video, we'll be taking a look back at some of the most dramatic, over-the-top and demanding divas from 90 Day Fiancé. Engagement rings flushed down the toilet, $45,000 dresses and lots and lots of eye-rolling. Stay tuned as we take a look back at some of our favourite antics from these high-maintenance divas. Number 5. Stephanie Matto in season 4 of the spin-off show Beyond the 90 Days, Stephanie starts major drama with her girlfriend Erica after a traumatic event, a party. Chug it, chug it. Had a girl. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie's standoffish nature ruins an evening with Erica's friends. As you see Erica drinking, dancing and having fun, you see Stephanie losing her poker face. Stephanie then takes it up a notch when she confronts Erica over feeling like an outcast throughout the night. Erica, what's going on? I'm just sick of the jealousy thing coming up like over and over again. I'm trying to bring you here to have fun with my friends and instantly you just bring something up that we've been fighting about all week. I'm trying to figure this whole thing out because this is weird to me and you're getting upset at me. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to get comfortable. I'm trying to figure this all out, okay? okay? Tomorrow, don't say that you haven't yelled at me because you are right now. If you want to fit in with her friends, maybe don't yell at Erica in front of them. Maybe, I don't know, wait till you're in the car. Stephanie then decides to handle the situation head on like a real adult by leaving. This is so, this is so up. Talk about a fun date night. No wonder this couple didn't stay in touch. Number four, Jasmine. When we first met Jasmine in season seven, it became immediately obvious that she was the polar opposite of her fiance, Blake, which made for some awkward scenes with his friends and family. One of her top diva moments was when she explained to her family and Blake's mum that she intends to be completely hands-free after the wedding. Like, I can do like social media every now and then, but like I don't want to like go 9 to 5 job. I just want to focus on like my inner peace and just like have a good mind. Inner peace doesn't pay the bills, Jasmine. Let's just say that Blake's mum was less than impressed with this idea. And funnily enough, Blake didn't have much to say about it either. What do you think about that? Me? Yes. So yeah, as far as diva behaviour goes on the show, I think Jasmine's right up there with the best of them. Number 3, Anfisa. Lover or hater, Anfisa really gave her partner George a run for his money, literally. Anfisa's love for money is undeniable throughout the season, and her bad attitude is even worse. But hey, she makes no bones about hiding it, she's completely honest about it from the very start. For example, when George and her are looking for wedding dresses, Anfisa chooses a reasonable option. What is your most expensive dress? Um, our most expensive dress would be $45,000. Mm. <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> and when George confronts Anfisa about her pricey habits and large money demands, her response is anything but affectionate. So you're basically saying that you're just dating me because I can buy you things. Yes. She later chimed in with a heartfelt I am beautiful and I like nice clothes, nice shoes, nice purses. So I expect him to pay for all that. Ah, oh, how cute. To make matters worse, Anfisa kicked George out of their apartment and when he tried to apologize to her, she welcomed him back with uh, closed arms. What do you want me to do to fix the situation? Nothing. I don't want nothing. You can't fix it. You can't fix stupid. True love comes at a price, apparently. A very, very big price. Number two, Leda. Leda is an evil stepmother if ever we saw one. Leda starts off complaining that her living arrangements with Eric are less than ideal and coming from a wealthy Indonesian family, the sight of Eric's apartment was not the castle that she was perhaps hoping for. Because yesterday I went to Eric's apartment for the first time and it's really horrible. And welcome home. What? Oh, it's tiny. How am I supposed to sleep then? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, she's not wrong. The bed is a bit small for her huge ego and large demands. 
And the cherry on top of the cake? Leda was just so over Eric paying child support for his children. I mean, who wants to support their kids when they can support a bridezilla instead? I'm not happy. I'm not gonna accept your child support. Living in a burner, you know? You don't even realize that. My children are not a burden. She demands more and more attention as she argues with Eric. And spoiler alert, it's all about her. I don't wanna feel like I'm forcing myself just because I wanna be here and I have to get married with you and then I have to regret it. When Eric offers a helping hand to maybe solve some of their issues, Leda snaps back with sass. What is the problem? Your life is my problem right now. Talk about drama queen. Leda is a true diva, never satisfied. Because I will never be happy. Number one, Larissa. From the moment Larissa stepped off the plane and confronted Colty about lack of flowers and lack of air conditioning in his car, it was clear to the viewers that she expected nothing but the very best. I want to buy a Chanel. $3,000. I just want to money. Money, 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 money. I mean, isn't that what true love is all about? When Colt agrees to give her a monthly credit card allowance of $200, although it's not necessarily a price she's happy with, she does have a surprisingly positive take on it. I want one million dollars from Colt, but it's better 200 than nothing. Wow, what a lucky man you are, Colt. And this one's one of my favorite scenes. When Colt's mum asks Larissa where her engagement ring is, drama erupts when Larissa explains her dramatic actions with Colty looking on quite heartbroken. Poor guy. I was not happy. Then uh, I thought I will turn away. About a week ago, we argued and Larissa ran to the bathroom and flushed the wedding ring down the toilet. When I heard the flush of the toilet, it broke my heart. Is it me or is a ring down the toilet the perfect metaphor for their relationship? As for now, I think you'll be hard pressed to find a single person in the world that disagrees with Colt on this one. I will move heaven and earth to make you happy, but sometimes your demands are quite ridiculous. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to take a look at our other 90 Day Fiancé videos that are on screen now, and do me a favour, leave us a like and subscribe. It really does help our channel. Thanks for watching, catch you on the next video.